what happens to the solution of our wave equation if we do not set the displacement to zero or both the same values on both boundaries. In that case, we cannot use separation of variables straight away and we have to be a bit more careful. We can use a method though, similar to the one we used for the heat equation. So let us see how this works out in this case, what are the similarities and what are the differences. So here we have our wave equation, uh, but now here we are zero, but here on this boundary, on the right boundary, we are one. And we have some initial conditions. We will specify them later on. For now, we just put f of x and g of x. And let's see what happens if we would just try to do separation of variables. So we will look for a uh, uh, superposition of solutions of the form x of x times t of t. We can put it in the PDE, that works fine. However, if you look at the right boundary, there we would get u of l of t equals 1. So x of x times uh, t of t at equals l should be 1. And that is not possible. Like you could maybe get one mode to 1, but then you use superposition and you will not have 1 on your right boundary anymore. So direct superposition uh, uh, of these solutions, direct use of separation of variables, is not going to work. We have to use a trick. Well, we will use a similar trick as we used in the heat equation. So what are we going to do? We use the ansatz that u is a superposition of an equilibrium solution, which only depends on x, and some transients, which depend both on x and on time. Of course, we can do this. So let us substitute it in the PDE. So in the PDE we get this expression over here. So on the left hand side only the transients because the equilibrium solution does not depend on uh, uh, time. See, t is missing here. And then in the boundary condition, on the left we have zero, on the right we have for the sum to be equal to one. Then in the initial condition, so the sum now becomes f of x, And in the other initial condition, second one, we only see the uh, <coughs> transients because the equilibrium solution does not depend on time. So if we differentiate it, it vanishes. And now we are going to split the problem into two parts. We do the equilibrium part, where we impose uxx equals to zero. So that means for the transients, we ha just have our normal wave equation. Uh, for the equilibrium solution, we set it to the left to zero, so that means that also the transients are zero to the left, that is this boundary condition. For the equilibrium solution, we set it to one on the right, which means you do this other boundary condition, that the transients are now zero to the right. So now we have the normal boundary conditions for our wave equation for the transients. And then finally the initial conditions. So if we look here, we will see that the transients now get as an initial condition uh, the f of x minus the equilibrium solution and this is just un unchanged. So we have a normal problem for the wave equation. Uh, however, we need of course this u equilibrium. So first we solve this u equilibrium and once we have that we can find uh, the solution of our wave equation for the transients and then we add them up to get our total solution. So let us get started. Equilibrium first. So uxx equals zero, integrate once, uxx equals c1, integrate again, u equals c1 times x plus c2, plug in the first boundary condition. So x equals zero, yield c2 equals 2, plug in x equals l, u equilibrium at l equals c1 times l has to be equal to 1. So c1 equals 1 over l, and we get u equilibrium equals x over l. So there we have our equilibrium solution. So now we can put that in here into our initial condition and we have our wave equation. Well, we know how to solve the wave equation over here with boundary condition zero uh, for x equals zero and x equals l. So we get sine and pi x over l for the uh, spatial behavior. And we have wave equation, so we get sine and cosines for the temporal behavior, which yields our transients as follows. 
So the sines uh, for the spatial behavior and the cosines and the sines for the temporal behavior. And the coefficients an and bn are determined by the initial conditions. So if you plug in x equals zero, uh, sorry, if you plug in time equals zero, the sine n by ct drops out and we are only left with terms as an. And uh, this has to be equal to the initial condition f of x now minus x over l from the equilibrium solution. And we can use our Fourier integrals to determine the an as follows. You have seen this before. And for the uh, For the bn, we first differentiate u transient with respect to time and then plug in t equals zero. So we lose the an terms because if we differentiate the cosine, we get a sine. Plug in t equals zero, we get zero. If we differentiate the sines, we get cosines. Plug in t equals zero, we get one. Uh, and we have this uh, n pi c over l from the chain rule. And this has to be equal to our second initial condition, g of x, which means that the bn times n pi c over l is determined by our Fourier integral with the g of x over here. Now, if you want to make some figures, if you want to make some plots, we have to specify our parameters, our c and l, and of course we have to specify our initial conditions, l of x and g of x. So that's what we're going to do next in order to be able to make some pictures. So we make some choices for f of x and g of x, and for the plots later on, we make some choices for the parameters. Now with these choices, we can compute our an, which is that awkward integral over there. I will go through that rather fast because you have seen many of those integrals before. Uh, so by now you know how to do them. And we will compute our bn, and those are a bit easier. So how do we compute the an? You have to use integrations by part. Integrate the sine, you get a cosine times what's left over here. Plugging in the boundaries yields zero. Minus, leave the cosine and differentiate this part, which is over here, which has to be integrated now. And you see that in our new integral, we get the integral of a cosine. If we integrate that one, we get a sine Uh, which is zero between the boundaries. So we are only left with this second term over here with the x. Uh, so simplify it over here. Uh, we, pick a, uh, we put all constants together, the l over n pi and the minus two over l is all put together over here. And we are only left with this x times the cosine integral. Use integration by parts again. We get the x times the sine between the boundaries, which is zero, both at x is zero, zero and x equals l. And we are left with the sine integral times the derivative of the x equals 1. So altogether, what's left is this prefactor here with the minus, which comes here, and this integral of the sine. Integrating it gives us a cosine, and between the boundaries, we get our an. Now the b and are much easier because we picked g of x equals 4. Putting in the 4 over here, we don't need integration by parts. Because now we can integrate directly, we get a cosine and plugging in the boundaries gives us our bn. Now let us see how this looks in a plot. So the blue line here is the uh, uh, equilibrium solution, this x over l. And what we see, we have some initial condition and we're just uh, having uh, going around this equilibrium solution. So you may remember from the heat equation, we had some equilibrium solution and we eventually approached that equilibrium solution. Well, here it's different. Here we are sort of waving around the equilibrium solution. And that's of course because there is in this problem uh, no dissipation. So we just have waves forever around our equilibrium solution. So that's the difference with the heat equation.